Are you ready? Go. All right, y'all. Welcome back. My name is JJ. This is another In the Hunt, and this time we find ourselves in Otagunma. Please like comment subscribe do all that good stuff let's get it underway now we're going to start with playstation 4 and this episode is going to be more playstation focused as you can see here we have the yamanote in this uh, playstation vr game not sure what that is about but it seems pretty cool and then we have this i can't remember the name i think it's like sentinel 13 a gay is something but it's by vanillaware and it was recently announced that it will be getting a north american release but um, in this episode, we're going to focus more on the PlayStation platforms. And then in the next episode, I'm going to show you like Xbox, Nintendo, and all those uh, Sega, you know, all those other consoles. But we're going to definitely start with the PlayStation stuff because that was just uh, the majority of what this store had to offer. And definitely feel free to pause if you want to take a closer look at a few of these games. Now, in this section here, I do definitely want to take some time to show off uh, Sekiro. I had a... Uh, a viewer requesting this and I just wanted to point it out because there is a few versions of this game and it's actually one game that I'm playing through uh, currently and I'm near the end and it's definitely uh, definitely worth a playthrough so if you haven't given it a, a go and if you like challenging games yeah be forewarned this game is definitely uh, has a little bit higher um, difficulty but if you stick with it you can get it done and that's a pretty uh, cool image there of Sekiro wearing the Tengu mask and then here is the the vanilla version with its slip cover on but definitely a good one and it's actually a game that has kind of retained its value um, even in uh, North America it seems to be hovering around that same price but then we have Basara this is kind of like a Warriors game it's just a Capcom variant and I don't think it's ever made its way stateside and then of course Gravity Rush 2 I, I definitely want to play this and as you can see here it includes like the the anime um, film or something I'm not exactly sure on the details but definitely gonna give this one a go sometime in the near future but we're just gonna keep making our way here and this double pack of Vanquish and Bayonetta definitely one that I would like to play as it's full 60 frames and at 1080 and I believe the Xbox One um, X version is uh, supports 4k I could be mistaken but definitely one that I would like to play and then here we have Bloodborne this is an amazing game this is one that I actually did get the platinum on and it's definitely at a reasonable price especially in North America it's usually on sale on PlayStation Network for a few bucks and then as you can see it has its Berserk inspired branding but definitely an awesome game and of course as is Valkyria Chronicles uh, I had this uh, as well and this is a highly recommended game and it's also available on the Nintendo Switch so if you want to take it on the go that's definitely another option um, and then we have Dark Souls Remastered uh, pretty cool game one that I also recently picked up and I'm not sure why because I don't think I'm gonna be replaying it as I've dove plenty of times into uh, that game and then that was just Tales of Arise that you saw there and then we have a few um, RPG like uh, adventure games uh, as well as near uh, replicant I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right but this is an HD uh, remaster this was originally a PlayStation 3 game the 360 also got a version of uh, near but although I think that one was called G salt a little bit different but anyhow let's make our way into the PlayStation Vita section it is a bit small but there were a few interesting titles there and then as you can see in the bottom there they did have a few uh, PS5 titles but we're more concerned with Vita we have Catherine here the physical release which was uh, made available in Japan unfortunately I don't even think the game got a digital release in North America but it is on a number of platforms so you're not missing out um, if you're just limited to North American games but we have Biohazard Revelations 2, which is actually not a very good port on the Vita. But this here, Ninja Gaiden Sigma Plus, uh, is, although it runs at half the frame rate as its uh, console brethren, but definitely a cool one. Although, be forewarned, this one is censored, so you're not going to see any uh, decapitations. And I think with Ninja Gaiden Sigma, they added a little bit too much. Uh, but anyhow, we have this game. It has a pretty interesting cover. Not sure what it's about, but maybe a few of you are interested in that genre of game. And then we have Asphalt Injection by Konami. This is a racing game that I've never heard of before, but it seems to have official licensing for vehicles. And it might be good because this one here, Ridge Racer, is a little bit bare bones. And I think uh, Namco uh, dropped the ball a little bit here. And 
I think it was only like three tracks and a couple cards, but anywho, we have Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Freaking love this fighting game. It's a little bit silly and um, and whatnot, but definitely a cool one. And if you have the Vita or the, the PS3 version, you can play against other players in either or platform. But then we have Tokyo Boys, the fan disc. I'm not sure what that's about, but it, that, that, there it is. And then we have a PlayStation 3 freaking awesome console and quite a bit of titles here at this uh, super book off no the book off super bazaar in Otagunma um, we have uh, Dead or Alive 5 last round I always show these Dead or Alive 5 games but it's kind of amazing that they've been around for so long and those games do feature a, a few of the characters from the Virtual Fighter series and then we have the Lego Marvel game haven't played this one before. I, in fact, I haven't really played many LEGO games, but they seem to be uh, pretty fun um, from what I have played. And then we have Street Fighter 4 Ultra there for about 11 bucks, as well as King of Fighters 12, which is another game like Ridge Racer that's pretty bare bones, but I don't know. I guess I'm more forgiving with KOF. And then we have J-Stars Versus, which features a lot of the uh, anime characters and then another version of Street Fighter Cross Tekken. And then this here, Tekken Tag Tournament 2 for the PS3, is probably one of the prettiest looking fighting games on the platform. And then the, the we have DBZ Burst Limit. I haven't played that one. Maybe good or not. And then here's one that I haven't actually seen before, which features an all-female cast. And it seems to be a 2D fighter. Not sure who the publisher or developer, who they are, but kind of an interesting looking one. And then of course the classic Virtual Fighter 5, which is going to be getting a re-release and probably make its way back into the into the fighting game uh, circuit for tourneys and whatnot. But then we have a uh, Motor Storm 2, which is probably one of my favorite um, racing games on the PlayStation 3, as well as Need for Speed Rivals. Although I haven't played Need for Speed, but Motor Storm 2 I can definitely vouch for, and it's a freaking awesome game. And here's another interesting one, Quantum Three Theory. I recently picked this one up, and I'm kind of excited to play it. But I, I'm, I know that it's going to be a mediocre game, but it's just kind of an interesting one, uh, at least for me. And then we have RE6, which is this uh, this uh, collector or a no, limited edition features like a DVD with uh, extra footage. And I'm not sure what's on there, but it's kind of interesting that they put it on a DVD. Usually, a lot of the PS3 stuff is on a Blu-ray disc, but uh, I guess it's better than nothing, but RE6 is kind of a mixed bag. As is Resident Evil 0, but as you can see here, the HD remaster did get its own release on the PlayStation 3. Um, I do own a, a, a copy of this, and it's actually one of the weaker entries into the series, but if you're a big fan, definitely worth a playthrough at least once. And then we have the Biohazard HD remaster, which also got its own uh, separate physical release and definitely a classic freaking love that game and then we have armored core for answer and i believe this one was directed by miyazaki the man behind the souls game as well as the upcoming elden ring and then we have azura's wrath freaking awesome cover um but i think it's a little bit better than the north american uh, counterpart and this one does support full english language options but anyhow Let's go ahead and check out some PlayStation 2 titles. There's definitely a lot that this uh, platform has to offer. And as you can see, they're just loaded with a lot of these games. And we're going to check out uh, Neo Contra here, which is about $14. And I have that version, and it's actually pretty good. Um, just your basic uh, over, uh, overhead run-and-gun shooter. But if that's your thing, definitely worth a, a playthrough. We're just going to skim through here. Lots of RPGs, you know, definitely feel free to pause. And we're going to take a look at a few of the, the games that fall under the Shin Megami Tensei universe, like uh, Devil Summoner here. Now, this one is uh, Devil Summoner Plus, which features the, the main protagonist from Nocturne. And then, of course, we have uh, both uh, Digital Devil Saga Volume 1 and 2. Now this is a great, uh, this is a freaking awesome art, uh, series there, definitely worth a playthrough. And a lot of these Shin Megami Tensei games that I just showed there are available on the PlayStation Network for about 10 bucks a piece for the PS3. And then we have uh, this Mana game part 4, haven't played it, but seems to have a pretty good following. Um, it may be good, maybe not, I'm not really sure, but the, the cover was definitely uh, pretty interesting there. 
and lots of fighting games, lots of racing games, two genres that I really enjoy playing. And the one that really stuck out to me is Sega Rally 2006. Now I have played this before and well I actually do own it. I actually picked up a copy but my copy included a Sega Rally 95 um, but can't go wrong either way. And then we have the classic Capcom versus SNK2. Still a very popular fighting game in the arcades as as is Initial D. I usually see an Initial D uh, racing cabinet uh, when I head to the arcades here in uh, Japan. But definitely need to get into that this series. I, I at least want to play it once because it seems pretty interesting. I usually see like the, the racing uh, game at the arcade and uh, I'm always tempted to play it. But anyhow, I'm not sure what this golf game is, but it looks pretty interesting. And sometimes these uh, these games can be pretty uh, calming and relaxing. But here's one that I didn't expect, uh, Taito Memories 2. And this is about $115. And it's a great collection of classic Taito games, with the standout being uh, Rastan Saga Episode 3, which I actually made a video on. But definitely a cool collection, although it is pricey. Hopefully these games get a uh, re-release on Switch and modern platforms but we have killer seven not really familiar with this title other than i believe suda 51 was involved and it's also available on the gamecube and then here's another classic berserk although now this if you're a fan i definitely recommend this but if you're not the gameplay can be pretty repetitive it is all in japanese but it's pretty it's pretty linear and pretty straightforward and you're not going to have any trouble progressing through the game and we have Silent Hill 2 Restless Dreams, which features the Maria scenario. Now, this version here, as the vanilla version, all the Silent Hill 2s in Japan do support full English language options. We have the greatest hits and uh, about the same price, about 26 bucks, more or less. And then we have Castlevania Curse of Darkness. I haven't played this one. Um, and I don't really know too much about the Castlevania entries on the PlayStation 2, but... I don't know, they might be decent, maybe not, but who knows. And then we have this uh, Takumi Shinobi, though. I'm not sure what this is, but never seen it before. But, you know, I do like uh, Shinobi Ninja-based games. So, who knows, it may be good. Kind of an interesting looking title there. But, of course, we have a few more fighting games. The PlayStation 2 was just loaded with fighting games. And let's take a closer look. We have uh, SNK versus Capcom, SBC Chaos. And this one is interesting because it did get a North American release, although the North American release was exclusive to the Xbox. And then we have King of Fighters 2002. This is the vanilla version. The PS2 also has Ultimate Dream Match, which is far, far more expensive, but this one here is definitely uh, more reasonable. And then we have the Orochi Saga for KOF, which is pretty popular and it kind of put it on the map. And then we have this here. I believe this is pronounced Evang Evangelion. It's an anime that's been around for so many years, but I'm not really, um, I haven't really paid much attention to it, but it does have its fair share of uh, video games and that one there for the PS2, as you just saw, is one of them. And then we have Hyper Street Fighter 2, that's the anniversary edition. Now in North America, this was bundled with uh, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. But definitely interesting to see it. Now this here is expensive. This Beat Mania, it's about 90 bucks. I don't know what's so special about it, but anyhow, we have Dororo here by Sega, an action game. I actually ended up picking this up, and I'm looking forward to giving it a playthrough. But anyhow, that's gonna do it for this episode. Next episode, we're gonna see Xbox. We're gonna see Super Famicom, Dreamcast, as well as Nintendo 64 and a few other consoles. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Anyhow, thank you for checking out Retro Rewire. My name is JJ, and I hope to see you all soon. Ciao.